All right, here's my one of my wood stashes. Uh, I'm out here cutting up a tree on some property I have, so uh, I'm gonna get into cutting a bull blank or two, but I wanted to show y'all uh, the condition I have some of my wood in, not all of it, but this is a couple years of collecting so far. So I've got some oak right here, some maple I got last winter, had a big uh, hollow in it, probably saw some of that in my other videos. Uh, here's some of the pecan that I was testing out earlier too. So a lot of this stuff is, is spalting right now and by the looks of some of it I'm probably gonna have to get it out of the, out of the weather. Here's my wood pile for scraps and stuff I don't need. We've had record amount of rainfall this year so it's a lot of fungus out and things are probably gonna get rotten away. Um, this is some poplar I found earlier in the summer. So before I was talking about, I don't typically like to cut in the summer, and uh, it was in the city. I didn't have the luxury of leaving it in a huge log. This was uh, a lot of burl on a poplar tree, and so I basically bucked it up and cut it in half and hand trucked it onto a trailer, and it's been sitting out here since then. Um, I didn't want to, by the looks of it, it looks like it's been holding holding pretty stable. I would have expected more more checking on the surface, so that's that's really good to see. Uh, I just wanted to cut roughly down where the pith was. Um, so I'm out here today. I had an ash tree that the top of it was dyed, and it probably could have stayed up another year or so. But I figured let's go ahead and take it down um, sections higher up. I haven't moved all of it yet, but so these two sections, so this is a crotch uh, that was higher up in the tree. It's had a pretty good trunk. This is what's left of the trunk. Those are about four foot sections. And I got five, six of them. So I had about a 20 foot section of trunk. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this yet, but probably we'll cut some bowls out of it. I think for the most part, I just want to let it sit and spalt some more. I'll probably cut a few blanks this winter and then just let it sit out here like the other stuff. Uh, crotch sections are the same way. Keep them big if you can. At least I like to. And this was a limb off the crotch here. Had more curvature in it. And there's a couple other sections that look like maybe there's some figure the way this bark's kind of moving right here there might be some figure in it might not we'll see all right back here uh, where i cut the tree down i can let y'all see my face instead of my hands for a little bit um so i want to show you what i've got here it's been dropped and it was standing right there in the tree line uh you can kind of see down the two trunk pieces uh, close to the base of the tree and is right down there in the ditch. Um, this is an this is an ash tree, green or white ash, I think. Uh, so most of the top is right here. That's getting sectioned up for firewood. And I'll chip all the top of the limbs out. Um, I got the last uh, some of the crotch sections that were higher up in the tree. Talked about those. I'll wax those up save those maybe those will turn into something uh, so let's go down here and I have these two sections this was the very bottom of the tree and this was just above uh, where the tree was filled so I'm gonna cut this up a little bit more I gotta sharpen my my chains my chain's getting dull the bars i don't think is quite right uh, so that causes your cuts to drift and the bar will bind up particularly if you're doing bigger longer cuts like i'm gonna cut these up into bowl blanks so probably do these two core them out before christmas hopefully and uh 
I'll show you how I do that. Okay, got my chainsaw sharpened. Um, using my small saw today. Um, been using that a lot more. Like it a bit uh, because it's a lot more gas friendly. So I don't have to fuel up as much. Uh, so what I have here is the very bottom section of the trunk. Uh, the one above it. That's already cut the bar length. Uh, basically, so the idea being that on this saw that your bar is going to extend all the way through on your cut. So that'll mean your shavings are going to fly out and pass and can evacuate uh, your kerf a lot easier. Uh, so one thing I noticed on this tree is ash splits very easily and uh, a lot of the sections higher up in the top uh, were had a lot of cracks starting to develop from where the tree fell down. Uh, this was right where I cut the tree so some of it splintered out here. So I think in this case, uh, this section is longer than bar length, so I'm going to have to make a cut, and I think I want to keep this side over here. And all this is intact. Pith, it's a little bit more misshapen, ir less irregular. Uh, the trunk started to flare out a little bit, so I think that's going to be all right. So I'm going to buck this section, and then I'll show you what I do for bowl blanks. All right, made my cut. Uh, don't know quite what I'm going to do with this section yet, but we'll pull it away. It might end up being firewood. I don't know yet. All right, so let's see what we have. The first thing I want to see is uh, how we're going to orient this section here. And, and what I look for is to see if there's any cracks already started. Uh, in this case, it's running right like this. So I want to rotate this log that way so that cracks uh, completely vertical. Uh, the reason for that is, is that I'm planning on getting a bowl blank on either side of this pith. And if your crack's running out on an angle, it means it's going to extend into your blank and that's going to mean more that you're going to have to remove uh, when you start turning. Otherwise, you can have a crack in your bowl and it might fail later. So we don't want that. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll rotate it up. I'll probably have some sticks or something. I'll block, block the side up here. I'll use my foot for now. Um, I may have mentioned earlier that on cutting blanks for vessels, I typically just make one cut straight down the middle. Uh, try to get right through the pith. That'll leave me uh, basically material on either side, and I cut from that. In times past, I've cut basically this section out right through here. Uh, I find that even this, this early part of the tree when the tree was real small, some of this is pretty unstable. So uh, depending on the tree, I've cut the pith uh, large enough, say about these four inches right through here. Uh, that'll leave you with quarter sawn sections here and here, and a bowl blank on either side. This one, I think I'm just going to make a single cut and try to hit straight down on the pith. Uh, this stuff will get turned out when you when you rough turn your bowls. So I think on this tree, I'm okay with doing a single cut, and I don't really have plans for... Uh, big platters or anything like that which is what you'd want to get your quarter sawn section out of so i think on this i'm going to plan on making some finished edge uh bowls so i'm going to make a cut down the pith i'm going to make a cut on the side for the bottom of the blank and on this side too if you wanted to do natural edge bowls your bowl is basically going to be right here so you'll make your one cut down the middle, and then that will be your blank. Uh, I may change my mind, however. I may do one of each, and, but we'll see. I think since this edge over here is so flat, uh, this to me might be better for a natural edge bowl because these, these really oblong sections are going to create some big sweeping wings and, and low dips on that. So the 
the height of the bowl, unless you have a really, really deep blank, will be less high up on the sides of the bowl, uh, which may may not be as attractive. So I, I'm kind of moving away from these these big curvatures over here on natural edges. I like to see a little bit lower curvature here. So I'll probably do a natural edge here and a finished edge on that side. Okay, I've previously talked about marking your pith line. So I made a notch right here with the saw, made a notch on the other side, and I've started my cut. And this is, I'm basically lining my piths up on either side. Uh, when you're doing bowl, bowl work, um, if you do that, you can see if I get a good shot here. So the edge of this tree is fairly parallel with that pith line. And this one over here is not. So to me, that's another reason why this section over here is going to be more desirable for your natural edge. Uh, if you have how this one's going off here, when you mount it on the lathe and say that's natural edge, you're going to have to kind of readjust. You're essentially going to have to make another cut parallel to that so you can bandsaw this blank. Uh, more evenly uh, so it'll be truer and you get less material cut out of your out of your diameter um, so on this one I got my pith line I'm gonna leave the natural edge there so I'm gonna make a slice here and then I think I'm gonna make another cut parallel to here and just do a finished edge bowl on this side okay so let's take another section of this other piece over here uh, before I start cutting on this I want to talk to you about what I see. Uh, a minute ago, I just told you I've in the past made larger sections cutting out the pith. Uh, the main reason for that being is, as I mentioned, this area right here is a lot more unstable, but more importantly, I have cracks that are already coming out this way. I've lined this one made up here. This is a pretty big one, kind of goes from here to here. So if I made a vertical cut, I could cut that right out. I have this other one kind of going this way. The other thing is, is on the other side, I might have a crack going this way. So we'll take a look at that. So this one is fairly vertical as well. Uh, so I don't have I don't have as much of an issue. Um, sometimes the cracks are kind of going this way, and so cutting a larger section to get the pith out. Uh, for me, it was a lot to remove that crack already, so I'd rather go ahead and do it here than, you know, doing it while I'm turning. Um, so, on this one, I'm probably okay. Uh, don't like that over here, so I will probably make a cut and then make another cut on this one. And uh, this may be firewood, it may be pin blanks. Um, I don't think I have enough width here for, you know, a platter or something like that. You need a pretty big tree to do platter work, uh, because your the best wood for doing that is really on the quarter sawn sections, say from about here all the way out. These rings are tight, and, uh, if you do platter work, cutting down through here, and particularly more as you get out into this face sawn material, I've uh, had a lot of issues with platters warping, and they don't sit flat, and I just I just haven't had good luck with doing platters out of flats on wood. Uh, so what I want to show you here is when I do my cuts, I have my pith line marked, and then what I like to do is, because I haven't cut all the way down through yet, I like to angle my saw so that I know I'm creating a kerf that stays in line with this pith down here. And then once I have that created, I'll tip my saw back up and then I'll be on this side cutting. And then I can gauge this back side to make sure I'm cutting straight down here as well. And I use this line as a reference for trying to stay parallel for cutting this flat sawn, or for this uh, finished edge blank here. 
And the other thing that I'll do is, particularly if I'm going to store these things, um, let's see here. This would be a blank for a bowl. A lot of times I'll make, after this gets laid out, I'll make a chop here and a chop there to square it up. So this material is already out of the way. I can burn it. I can get it out of the way, but it's not going to be shavings. And my blanks will stack uh, a lot easier because they're, they're going to be fairly rectangular. They're going to have flats on these edges so you don't have a lot of space in between them. Okay. Got uh, some blanks here and I'm squaring off the edges. So started on this one. Let's take a look. <clears throat> I am, let's see on this bar, that's an 18 inch bar. My lathe, I'm not going to get anything bigger than 14 inch bowl. Uh, so I'm looking for bar length that way and probably neighborhood of 16 inches, something like that. And so I'm cutting off that side, that side, and that'll be the blank. Wax the ends, go stack them up, core them out, whatever. Uh, so this is what I'm getting ready to do here. And this piece over here, I am probably, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, this wasn't quite a full bar length, so could be a small bowl. I might make some canisters out of them. I, I don't know really for sure what I'm going to do yet. So I'm just leaving them in thick chunks and I'll come up with some idea later. Um, point being, this is what I was talking about in cutting a wider section out for the pith. And a lot of that is because is this is damaged severely and is going to have to get removed at some point. So to me, this is the best time to do it. And I don't have any need necessarily for quarter sawn ash. Uh, I personally don't do much in the way of pen blanks. Um, certain species like dogwood, persimmon, something that's very hard that I can cut a thread in, I will keep these quarter sawn sections and I'll, I'll cut those down into blanks uh, to keep those on hand. Um, but you might find some other uses for them. So, so anyway, this, uh, this quarter sawn section right here, so I will cut out the pith for the, for the species that I do keep, and I'll keep that, wax them up, store them, wax that side up, and uh, if I have a use for it. That's basically how and what I do for cutting up bowl blanks. Um, you, there are probably several people who you can find videos on that sort of uh, that sort of thing. It's it's all pretty straightforward. It's just generally a lot of a lot of thick wood. If you're going to do uh, a lot of bowl turning, then you're you're going to have to go out and get bigger chunks like this from wood yourself because it's it's a lot more difficult to find uh, wood in this thickness. Uh, so that's it. So that's how I cut my bowl blanks.